Hi, this is Isabel Florence and you are listening to You Are Light Podcast, a safe space where we talk about mental health and well-being. Hello, lovely. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Today we're going to talk about dissociation. This is a topic that I want to talk about because of something that happened to me last week. And I'm going to tell you the story at the end of the episode and explain my relationship to dissociation so far. So stick around. So what is dissociation? It is a process where we disconnect from our thoughts, our feelings, our memories and or our sense of identity. It can either be quick and mild or it can be chronic and severe. Today we're mostly going to talk about the fleeting experience of dissociation and we will focus on the occurrence of dissociation in our younger years and how that is reflected in our lives as an adult. So again, we approach everything with gratitude for its existence and dissociation is a coping mechanism. It is there to protect us. So it is a way for the brain to protect you from trauma, overwhelming emotional experiences or from physical pain. So it's a beautiful mechanism of protection. And I think having that perception is important when we uncover the reality that is you might have disassociated as a child as a response of trauma. A misconception is that dissociation is very rare, but it's actually quite common. It affects up to one in five people in their lives. And I want you to remember that this is a sign of strength not weakness. It is a sign of strength that you have been able to protect yourself from such an intense situation. It is not a choice. It is an involuntary response to trauma or stress. So it's the body and the brain protecting you from danger. And it happens when you feel as a child that your safety is taken away. You feel unsafe. It can have a significant impact on someone's life as an adult if they have dissociated as a child and especially if they don't work through their trauma with a therapist or someone qualified. It is more likely for someone to engage in self-harming behaviors if they have experienced dissociation as a kid. It can lead to difficulty in maintaining relationships or opening up in relationships, being vulnerable, being yourself, being unguarded. It can lead to substance abuse in your adult years in a way to mask some of the pain that is buried in your subconscious. You may have difficulty regulating your emotions. So I think understanding what it is and very slowly in a very safe environment with qualified people, it can be incredibly beneficial to work on unveiling the times in your life where you may have dissociated but again always respecting the body respecting the mind taking the time while being kind to yourself not pushing it too far allowing yourself to work through things very slowly very mindfully and always with the help of a therapist so if you as a child experience dissociation I think it is incredibly helpful to connect with your inner child as an adult because it will get to a point where you might have to work through the emotions that you might not have done so when you were a kid, when you dissociated, when you left the room, when you left your body and mind because it was in danger. So your inner child catches up with the feeling that you had when you were in danger. So what can we do? We can explore inner child dialoguing through journaling. This is an amazing practice to include in your life. Finding a way to connect to your inner child without judgment for how they feel. Almost acting as a parent. Perhaps acting in a way that you would have needed at that time to feel safe. Compassion, patience, love, honesty. It's important to build an internal sense of safety to be able to do this kind of work. And for that, self-compassion needs to be at the forefront of the work. Finding a trauma-specialized therapist can be really incredible. To tune into 
the things that you went through. I know this can be really scary, but it might be the case that the first step is actually the scariest step. Because once you find someone, you're not going to be alone working through it. Learning mindfulness skills can help deal with possible dissociations in your adult life and allow you to not go into an unhealthy coping mechanism like self-harm or eating disorders. Having people in your life that you trust is really important at this time, even if it's one, two people. So you can talk about it, share your experience, feel held by those that love you. Educating yourself further about dissociation can be really helpful. So you can understand what is going on in the body and mind and what happened to you. And living now as an adult with the intention of supporting, loving and respecting your inner child. So that might mean placing boundaries in relationships. That might mean being a little bit more honest with your family members, a little bit more firm about your needs. It might mean taking more time for yourself, being a little bit more selfish now and again. It might even mean practicing things that you really loved as a child, like drawing, painting, playing. And grounding skills should be available to you if you feel you might engage in an unhealthy coping mechanism or if you might dissociate as an adult. So some of these grounding skills can be focusing on each of your senses. What can I see? What can I smell? What can I hear? What can I taste? You can hold a cube of ice and focus on the sensation in your hands. You can slow down your breathing or just focus on your breathing. You can engage in physical activity like going for a walk or doing some yoga. When we understand what it is that our child self went through, a lot of emotions come through as you feel sadness for the fact that you went through that. And that's okay, that's healthy. So what happened to me that made me want to explore this subject is I had a cranial sacral therapy session and I had had in that week an interaction that took me back to moments in my childhood where I dissociated. And in this cranial sacral therapy session, I felt a lot of what I would have felt at that point. I felt a very heavy heart. I felt nauseous. I felt tension around my heart and the therapist said that she felt me as a child rather than the weight of my adult body. She felt a very light child. So at that point, I understood very well that the work that I was doing was for my child self. It doesn't mean it's easy. It's painful work to do, but at the same time, it can be very freeing because it allows me to come to the conclusion that the pain that she felt, the danger that she felt was very real for her. And I now, as an adult, acknowledge and validate her feelings. And I know that your inner child deserves the same. We all have an inner child that deserves to be listened to, to be held. They deserve to have their feelings validated. They deserve for us to feel the things that they didn't feel safe enough to feel. And I'm here for her to feel that. I am still working on creating the boundaries to keep her safe because that's still very difficult for me. I still feel scared to do so, but I'm getting there. I'm getting closer. And this kind of work doesn't happen overnight. And I'm very grateful to have people that I love and that I feel safe around near me to support me with these things. I'm very grateful to have an incredible therapist to support me through my journey. I am very grateful to be able to engage in habits that are very healing, like yoga, craniosacral therapy, meditation. It's pretty crazy stuff, but it is incredible. I can see how far I've come in this healing journey because for a very long time my coping mechanisms were getting in the way of me being the person that I am right now and I cannot judge myself for having those coping mechanisms for dealing with abuse of substances and 
difficulty being open and being vulnerable in relationships and eating disorder tendencies. I do not judge myself for going through these things because it was all protecting me. Slowly we understand the monsters that live within us and with work and with time we do not kill those monsters, we do not silence those monsters completely, we just take them from being within to being out here where we can see, we can understand. We look at the whole picture. They don't go away completely, but there's more distance between you and that monster. And your inner child feels safer, taken care of, <laughs> loved and held. Just like any child has the right to feel. This is a very vulnerable moment for me and I hope you're kind to me. And I hope you're kind to yourself and to your inner child. They deserve it. I love you very much and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. All the links are written down on the show notes as well as resources for anyone struggling with their mental health. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified when we release new episodes. Also, feel free to share our podcast with your friends and family. And if you'd like to get involved, explore our content or support our work, visit our website www.youarelight.earth that's y-o-u-r light.earth also don't forget to follow us on instagram at u.r.light have a wonderful week and i'll see you next time